Thanks very much for the invitation to be here today. The, um, on my reading of the white paper, there's a very clear statement around the importance of infrastructure. And if I may quote, infrastructure is fundamental to support growth, productivity, and ultimately our standard of living. This infrastructure must be available when required, be delivered efficiently, and be fit for the purpose it was intended. These are really solid principles for us to build on. The question I wanted to explore today is how does the draft legislation support these objectives? One of the downsides of having done a law degree is you actually read these draft exposure bills and um, unfortunately you find holes in them or other opportunities to be addressed. So I might highlight a few um, areas which I feel are unanswered in the bill at the moment and um, which I thought are worth considering because these, are, these infrastructure issues typically get forgotten until we reach a situation where there's no money or land for the infrastructure that's required. So the first um, issue I wanted to raise is that there is no requirement, as far as I can see in the draft legislation, there is no requirement for the supply of infrastructure to meet the level of demand created by new homes, new mm. jobs and new development at the same time that they need them. So what I mean by that is if a new development for residential housing or new commercial properties means more workers and more families, there is no requirement to make sure that their corresponding needs for schools, parks, public transport are met at the time that they move into those new residential properties. The current provisions allow for a lag of up to three years between the time that local councils collect contributions for infrastructure and the time that the money is actually spent building that infrastructure. This is essentially legislating a three-year holiday that you're entitled to between addressed by recognising the need for infrastructure and actually supplying it. This is not to say that all councils will operate in that way, but it's just identifying that there is up to three years for that money to be spent. And the areas where that may not be good enough is if there's already an area with a shortage of social infrastructure and there is no mechanism available to have those shortages addressed sooner rather than later before that inadequacy is exasperated by further demand caused by new development. There are also no explicit powers for decision makers to delay or refuse consent on the basis that there isn't sufficient infrastructure to support the new development. So we have, for example, environmental impact assessments but there is no such thing as an infrastructure impact assessment in the legislation. Another question I'd like to raise on the bill is um, whether all types of infrastructure are covered. So my understanding is that local governments can create local infrastructure plans, but they only apply to the infrastructure specified in the legislation. And one of those areas of infrastructure is community facilities, but this is largely undefined. So does community facilities include indoor, um, indoor sporting facilities? Does it include childcare? Does it include playgrounds and parks? And are there potential loopholes that enable councils either to avoid responsibility for planning for these <coughs> services or to mandate um, them to be included in the local infrastructure plans? The other, um, I think, definition that's missing is uh, the definition of infrastructure under um, regional uh, infrastructure plans. So educational establishments are specifically called out as regional <coughs> infrastructure, but where this definition gets a bit grey is, does education only include primary schools, high schools, tertiary institutions, or will we accept that childcare, which is early learning education, is also part of this education system? So these are just some of the unanswered questions. The other um, challenge is that where are the provisions for infrastructure infill? So we've got a lot of um, commentary on development infill across the state, but what about existing gaps in infrastructure? Where are the provisions to infill those gaps? Are there mechanisms to ensure that we can still collect contributions to address gaps that are already exist in addition to future demand created by development? Now, community engagement, I wasn't um, 
able to hear the speakers this morning on community engagement, but one of the areas that I have specific concern about is how will the community be able to request that a local or regional infrastructure plan be updated to recognise that those plans may no longer meet the needs, the current or future needs of the community. So for example, a local infrastructure plan is typically done every 10 years or to provide for the next 10 years. Demography can change within nine months. So how will the community be able to kick off a process where it can say, our needs have now changed and we need the local infrastructure plans to change with them to provide for what those future needs are. Lastly, there is no provisions that I've been able to find to ensure that there's consistency across how infrastructure plans are developed. And what I mean by this is, what is the common measure or standards to determine how much infrastructure is enough? Do we have benchmarks that say this is how much public transport we need in an area, how many school places, how many childcare places, how many sporting fields? So when these plans are put forward to ministers or departments to approve, on what basis are they being approved? How do we know that those plans adequately address the current and future needs of the community? So while I've raised that there are a number of unanswered questions in the white paper and also the draft legislation, these are also opportunities um, for us to address them through this debate and future debate. It's an opportunity for us to revisit these issues and leave a legacy of a planning system that not only provides for, for future economic <coughs> growth, for future housing growth and for future growth in jobs, but also for the growth of our children, our families and our communities. Thank you.